This time on Bandit Patrol, a high fly and rescue go, buddy. ruffles some tail feathers. Oh, he's serious about protecting his baby. Don't you dare! Then, uh -huh. an injured turtle gets a sweet shell makeover. No way. And a squirrely little chipmunk keeps giving the rehabbers the slip. I must have some type of Bermuda Triangle in here. Yeah, yeah. It's springtime in Western Kentucky, and for licensed wildlife rehabber Kristen Allen, that means it's baby season. There you go, sugar pie. So this time of year, we get orphaned newborns coming in almost every day, and they're adorable, but they require 24-hour care, and that's a lot of work. Oh my gosh, I know you're hungry. This morning is proving no different, as a new animal arrives in need of an emergency exam. I think he's the littlest screech owl I've ever seen. I just got a baby screech owl dropped off at my house. Some guy found it in his garden, and I'm going to check him out. Open him up for me, big guy. He doesn't seem to have head trauma. His eyes seem to be the same size, though. Let me see his little wings. He doesn't have primary feathers yet. This little bird, he's in such good shape. That wing feels fine. He's good and fat, but I'm wondering if he got a little too close to the edge and he took a little tumble out of the tree. So if your mom was feeding you, why are you out of the tree, huh? A baby bird falling out of its nest is not uncommon, but this little screech owl that Sophia has nicknamed Jimmy could be a sign of a far more serious situation. He seems perfectly normal. I know. I'm worried that something happened to mom and more babies are going to be jumping out of the tree. Screech owls usually have somewhere between two and six babies. So I need to go out there to make sure that there aren't any other babies that need me. Let's go, spaghetti -o. Sophia and I are taking our little screech owl back to the place where he was found. How's he doing, Sophia? He's doing really good. He's just sitting here. There are other babies out of the nest. I want to make sure that I get them quickly so that they don't get eaten by anything. All right, let's go see. Where did he say it was? He said he found it in the garden area. OK. There's lots of trees. They love to nest in holes and trees, so they're going to go with a more dead tree than a live tree. Screech owls are cavity dwellers, so they usually make their house in an old tree that is rotted and hollow on the inside. And there's usually a hole that they can go in and out of. That's too small a hole. Tell me if you see something. Oh, 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 there he is. There's a baby. Oh, my. After I see how high up this hole is, I decide that I'm definitely going to call Grant because I would rather hold the ladder than climb up that ladder. Don't stand so close to the edge. He apparently didn't learn his lesson from his brother that fell out of the tree. There's another one back there, too. There's two? There's two. It's hard to know why Jimmy came out of the nest. He could have been pushed out. He could have jumped out. But the bottom line is, we need to monitor him and make sure there's not something more serious going on. Hey, guys. Hey. Look at him up there, Grant. <laughs> OK, now I saw two, but there may be more in there, so. Hopefully, the mom doesn't come get me, right? <laughs> or hopefully. <laughs> Hold on to it. Be careful. I know. Contrary to popular belief, the act of handling a bird will not make its parents reject it. And since Grant is a certified raptor rehabber, he knows exactly how to properly do it. Here you go, buddy. I want to stay with you. My God, come on. Don't jump out or anything. Mm. There you go. The nest that the mom put him in is a little shallow. So I am putting the board up there, so that way the hole is smaller, so that way they have less chance of falling out of it. 
I'm gonna leave at least three inches just to play it safe, so that way the mom can still get in to feed them. I'm barely covering it, so we're good. Okay. It just gives them a little bit extra where they can't fall out. All right. Jimmy is back home safe, but why he came out is still a mystery. To be sure he's out of danger, the Allens will keep an eye on the nest site for the next few days. We just have to wait and see if mom comes back. Outside the small town of Madisonville, Kentucky, rehabber Nancy Reynolds' rescue season is really ramping up. We will find any of it. We have a lot of major roads running through the woods. A lot of these animals are crossing these roads and getting hit by cars. And today, I got a call about a box turtle that got hit by a car. Ready to see this turtle? Mm. Yeah. I was on my way to work and uh, look over and see a turtle that obviously has been hit by a car. Is the bottom of it cracked too, or just the top? Maybe just a little bit. It looked like he was injured very bad, and I really didn't think he was going to make it. A lot of energy. He does. Though. He's really lively. This is not a good wound, though. <laughs> I didn't think that turtle was going to live. I knew that if I didn't do everything just right, that I could lose the turtle. Right. The holes in that little skin, too. Well, that, yeah, that little membrane. Yeah. So the so, shell's gone. Like, it's not even there. Yeah, it's gone. I'm worried about infection, because, I mean, mm -hmm. he's got, like, yeah, it, skin yeah. open here. And there may be internal injuries that we don't see. So I got to get this guy home and get some fluids in him, call a few other rehabbers, and see if they can give me some good advice. Good luck. Let me know how he does. Will do. All right, let's go for a car ride. I'm headed home. I have everything I need there to stabilize this turtle. I thought if it made it through the night that it might have a chance. The damage is beyond anything she has ever dealt with before. So Nancy reaches out to some fellow rehabbers about how to proceed. Hey, Bridget, it's Nancy. Hey, Nancy. I have a turtle that looks pretty rough. Thought you might have some advice for me since you have done this before. Nancy? Yeah. Oh, Nancy, this is horrible. No, I told you it was bad. It kind of looks like that is an opening directly to his organ. So you need to address that probably sooner than anything else. OK. This is just a little bit beyond what I would do by myself. And I would get a second opinion. OK. On Brigitte's advice, Nancy reaches out to fellow rehabber Nikki Christian, who is also a trauma nurse and deals with severe injuries on a regular basis. I got a question for you. I just sent you some photos, and oh my. That is absolutely horrible. That's a lot of shell missing. Yeah, I know. I said there was a big chunk of it gone. I can see that it's lung. But what is the big white spot in the middle? I think it's where the shell poked into it whenever it probably got damaged, because there's a corner piece right above it, and this piece moves a lot. So I think that corner piece might have poked that a little. First of all, we got to stabilize those fragmented pieces. Just because if it moves even slightly and punctures that lung, this little guy probably won't make it. Well, let me get some stuff together, and then I will head on over there. Thank you. You're welcome. See you soon. Bye. Uh, the next 24 hours for this turtle is very critical. Even if it does make it, it's going to have an uphill battle ahead of him. It's OK. 30 miles away, Kristen Allen is responding to an emergency of her own. Little Jimmy has once again fallen from his nest and is in danger. I cannot believe that silly bird fell out of the nest again. If a raptor comes out of the nest twice, you have to feel like there's some reason that he's getting out. I got to get this baby. The first time he stayed safe, so I'm just hoping this time he didn't hurt himself. Hey, little guy. What are you doing back out again? Uh, I don't like all those flies around you. Flies will start laying eggs on the bird. They'll hatch out, and there'll be maggots. Everything goes way downhill once the flies start laying it on somebody. They're feeding you something. 
Oh, I got it. I got it. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Gosh dang it. Licensed wildlife rehabber Kristen Allen is checking in on Jimmy the Screech Owl, who's fallen from his nest for the second time in two days. They're feeding you something. Oh, that was good. OK, all right, I got it. I got it. I got it. Your dad hit me in the head. Nice day. So mom is up in the hole in the tree, and she's trying to figure out what's going on. Don't you dare, don't you dare. Dad's just dive bombing me with talons. And I'm thinking, OK, this little guy, he's serious about protecting his baby. You can't stay on the ground, buddy. OK. Screech owl babies are known to fight fiercely amongst each other for food. It is very possible that Jimmy's brother and sister are forcing him from the nest because they just want more food. These are not fledglings. They're not big enough to live on the ground. You don't put him back in twice, because you know that he's going to come out a third time. And the third time he comes out, he may break a wing, he may break his neck. You know, sometimes it's survival of the fittest. So Jimmy's going home with me again. You know what? Keep your baby in the nest, silly. All right, let's get you a container to go in. Let's get you in the car and take you home. It's deja vu for Jimmy as he arrives at the Allen home for the second time in two days. Check you out and make sure you didn't get hurt this time when you fell. You're kind of becoming a little troublemaker in my life, aren't you? Your talons work well there. Let go. Let me see you. Well, when you're good and fat, I can tell that you're eating from all the poop on my shirt. I don't know how you fall out of that tree every time and don't hurt yourself. I'm really surprised that Jimmy didn't get hurt from either of his two falls from the nest. No injuries. The only thing I'm prescribing is a little rest and relaxation. You just chill out for a while. No more falling out of trees. Jimmy was extremely lucky, but he's got a rough road ahead of him. Soon, he'll take the first steps on the long journey toward being released. To make sure that Jimmy is ready to go back out in the wild again, we're going to have to really help him out with his hunting skills and his flying skills. It's a careful step-by-step -step process that will start just as soon as he's strong enough. I'm just going to check on you later, buddy. The little box turtle with the shattered shell that Nancy has named Rodney is hanging on despite his severe injuries. I thought it was going to die overnight because it was just so bad. It was cracked everywhere, and then plus the blood and everything. It was really gross. Fellow rehabber Nikki Christian has come up with a plan to stabilize the shattered fragments of his shell. Oh. See, there's a crack here. And you can see him this breathing. Is... <laughs> yes, you can see him breathing. To sit there and watch his lungs go in and out, this is truly unbelievable, what he's been through, and he's still alive. So what do you think about putting this back together? Everything that's you know close together, like this crack here, that one, I would want to glue these. OK. Just so they think? don't move. I can't believe how much that actually moves underneath there. Don't get mad, turtle. Yeah, don't bite me. It's going to be better, I promise. A lot of people might have given up because the injury was so bad. I can't make myself make that decision to put him down until I've exhausted every option that I have. He wasn't giving up, and neither was I. Are we going to start with the top or the bottom? Let's start here just because it'll be easier. To stabilize the shell fragments, Nikki and Nancy will first fuse the pieces that are closer together with a medical grade adhesive normally used to close wounds in injured people. If you would hold still, this would work out so much better. Sure. When it gets stabilized and he can move around without it shifting back and forth, yeah, it's going to make him feel a lot better. To secure the pieces that are spaced further apart, they'll start by attaching a series of hooks to the shell. You're going to do, like, right there. Just a dot. Yeah, just a dot. Stick it in one right there. OK, 
can't believe we're gluing a turtle right now. Once the hooks are on there, we're going to take wire and wrap it around and just kind of stabilize it. I don't want it to be so tight that it puts pressure on it. I yeah. just, in case something moves. Well, with the hooks and the wire, we were just hoping that it would stay together and those, those cracks would heal. Of course, I knew the hole wasn't going anywhere. I had to do something else about it, but at least the cracks would fuse back together. Sorry, I'm love. I'm really stressed out. Oh. OK, that's the good sign. He's using the bathroom. Rodney is pretty angry at this point. He decides, since we're not giving up, that his last resort is to try to pee on us. That's right. But go ahead and go right ahead. I've never seen a turtle pee before. Well, you have now. It's a really good sign. It means all of the bodily functions are working properly. I think we did good. Yeah, no. He's had enough. Rodney was definitely driven. To survive what he survived, I have never seen a turtle in that bad of shape actually survive. All right, time to rest. You have to keep trying as long as they're trying. If it's going to fight, I'm going to fight with it. We got a long way to go, but yeah, he does. fingers crossed. It's going to look better. It's a big day for Jimmy the Orphan Screech Owl. Licensed rehabber Grant Allen is starting him on his journey to being returned back into the wild. OK, buddy. OK. He's got most of his adult feathers, but he still has a lot of fluff. He needs to get rid of some of that before he hits that fledgling stage. To understand where Jimmy is in his development, Grant will start by testing his eating habits. But it's critical that Jimmy doesn't see him as a natural source for food. Here you go, Jimmy. So feeding him requires a little trickery. I'm putting this owl puppet in here so that way he thinks that it's more like a mom feeding him rather than a human. We do not want to imprint him before he goes out in the wild because then he'd go looking to humans for food. So I'm going to try to see if Jimmy will eat it off the hemostat. Here you go, Jimmy. A nestling will take food directly from its mother. So I don't feel Jimmy taking the food. He's not even attempting for it. But as they develop, owl chicks will eat food dropped onto the floor of the nest. I'm going to drop it on the ground just like its mom would out in the wild. It looks like this little owl needs a little privacy to eat it all. I'm going to put Jimmy up over here where his regular box was and check on him in a couple hours to see if he ate. A few weeks here to grow and build wing strength, and he'll be ready to move on to a larger enclosure for flight training and a chance to hunt some live prey. Who wants a treat? You want a treat? Come on, I'll get you a treat. It's lunchtime, and someone is jockeying for the attention of licensed rehabber Bridgette Williams. Good boy. Major the Groundhog is one of a few animal ambassadors at Brigitte's facility who are unable to live on their own in the wild. Come on. And with a bunch of newbies in the house, Major is determined to establish who's boss. Sometimes animals in here can be a little needy. I think Major's needing a little bit of attention right now. Ouch. Caring for her permanent residence and all the babies she's recently acquired is a full-time job. But that doesn't stop her from helping out when a new animal is in need. Hello? Oh, my gosh. I'll just head out right now. OK? I know just where you are. A call just came in about a chipmunk rescued while being attacked by a dog. Unfortunately, it's very common for outside pets to either severely injure or kill wildlife. The chipmunk is alive, but is showing signs of an injured paw. I'm always concerned when the animal is not using either their front or back legs. I can only help so much, and it's up to the animal and how severe the nerve damage is. Hey Hi there. How are, how are you guys? We're good. Thanks for helping and calling. No help problem. this little guy. No How's he doing? Last night, he actually tried to get out of the box. OK. I think his left front leg is broken, but I'm not for sure. OK. And let's He's see who we have. I really like when I hear that an animal is trying to escape. 
To me, that means the injury might not be as severe as originally thought. We gave him a little bit of water, like you said. Okay. <gasps> that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. <laughs> There's that leg that I was talking about. Now that this chipmunk is contained, I'm gonna take him back home where I can do a more thorough assessment on the severity of his injuries. He's so cute. <laughs> so are these teeth that are biting my glove. A chipmunk without full use of its leg will have a hard time surviving in the wild. He didn't bite me. I'm sure you weren't holding like this. Oh, shoot. Okay, where you go? Got him, got him. I know. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh, gosh. No one move. He's so cute. They are so cute, right? Oh, shoot. Okay. Where you Licensed go? rehabber Bridgette Williams is giving chase to an shoot, injured shoot, chipmunk. Shoot. Got him. got him, got him. Grab it, Jane, grab it. She's got it. I know. If he escapes with a wounded leg, he'll have a hard time feeding and defending himself in the wild. He's under the front wheel up there in the front. If you can shoe him my way, I'm going to put a box over him. Right there under the front wheel, Jamie. OK, hold on. No one move. Get him, get him, got him. Do you have him? Yeah. OK, <laughs> is he in your shirt? He's trapped. OK. Good job, good job. It's called wrangling children. Even though this little guy gave me a run for my money, as I'm taking a good look at him, he definitely is favoring one of his paws over the other. His yeah. little wrist is bent. Yeah. Once I get back, I'll see if I feel any fractures. Thank you, guys. <laughs> There's never a dull moment in our house. Yeah. Back at the rehab facility, plenty of curious eyes are wondering who the new patient is that just arrived. First thing I'm going to do for this little chipmunk, I know he's going to need a little bit of pain medicine. Just a tiny bit for a tiny little guy. Chipmunks are super fly fast. And they don't really like to be handled. Hey, buddy. It's pretty good. I don't immediately feel a fracture. His fingers are responsive, which is good. I'm moving his hand out, and he has a little bit of resistance, and he's curving it back. Over the next 48 hours, I will observe this little chipmunk to make sure that his sprain is not anything more serious. If he shows that he is doing fine, he'll be out pretty quickly. I'm going to go ahead and move him to a slightly larger plastic container. Just gonna let this little guy out on his own. Every good chipmunk needs a house. Now I wait and watch. It's been four weeks since Kristen brought Jimmy the Screech Owl home. I feel how fat you are. He's thriving thanks to all the special care and food. That is way too much. Bird never starves in my care. Now it's time for him to move on to the most challenging stage on his journey to being released. He's getting all of his adult feathers, his flight feathers in. He has little tufts on his head. His big boy tufts. He's definitely showing the signs of being a fledgling, so we can take him out to the center. Let's that do it. Way. He can start learning to fly. Today, we are taking Jimmy out to Western Kentucky Raptor Center. This is where he will fly around, strengthen his wings, and get prepared to be released back out into the wild. I'm super excited about this. I think he's going to fly great, too. I think yeah. he is, too. I need to make sure that Jimmy can fly before he's released back out in the wild again. I've been the mama owl ever since we got him. But I know that instincts are going to kick in for this boy. As soon as he gets in a bigger space, he's going to start flying. Let's see how you do, Jimmy. I think he's going to be loving it in here. I think he is, too. He's really getting those red feathers now, like his parents. Ready? Try to fly over there. You ready? Nope, not over there. Nope, look over there. This is the last time I was this tall. I fell out of a tree. Get him a little closer to the box. Oh! That was good, though. 
know. This is the first time he's actually had a chance to fly. So exactly. He tried to land on the small branch and missed. Did good. Good for his first try. Exactly. But I'm just going to put him up on the branch so that way he has a chance to fly from one to another if he wants to try. Okay, sounds good. Jimmy's off to a good start, but he still has a ways to go. So Kristen and Grant are going to leave him to work on his technique. Bye, Jimmy. For rehabber Bridgette Williams, her routine morning check-in is turning out to be not so routine. I came in this morning to discover that one of the chipmunks that I had been caring for decided to chew the small air hole into a slightly larger hole, just big enough for his escape. Two marks here, he has some here and here. Four people look for this guy already today, and we just cannot find him anywhere. These guys are super, super quick. They can just jump right past you. No way. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I love you. I love you. Where? He's right here. He did the very best thing. Oh my gosh. There he is. Double fisted. Ah. Oh. Give me, give me. No way. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I love you. A very crafty chipmunk with an injured paw is loose inside Bridgette Williams' rehab facility. Where? Oh my gosh, this is why I pay you so much. I really need to find this little chipmunk. If he, for some reason, slips out, I don't think he's going to be able to survive in the wild with that leg. Let me get you. Uh, you stay on this side. I think he's probably further back. I hear him. Or there he is. I must have some type of Bermuda Triangle in here because I see him. I block him. I don't think he can get past here because I've pushed the tables all the way to the wall. But somewhere between seeing him and blocking him, oh, saw him. I saw him too. I turned. Get him, get him there's this Bermuda Triangle that he gets sucked in and just disappears. I do see some evidence of him from overnight. Mm -hmm. It's important for the team to catch the chipmunk so his leg can be checked before his release. And since chasing him hasn't worked, Bridgette now resorts to plan B. I decided just to get a small, humane mousetrap. I have baited it with peanut butter in hopes that he would smell it and end up in the trap. This is the last area where the chipmunk was seen. Fingers crossed, let's hope for the best. I guess we'll just have to keep our eyes peeled again. You keep your good eyes peeled, okay? <laughs> and just in case this chipmunk is too smart to fall for the trap, Bridgette has one more backup plan. I need to be a little bit quicker next time, so I'm gonna practice my quick draws. I think he's laughing at us right now. He is laughing. In Madisonville, Rodney the box turtle with the injured shell has survived the critical first few days. He's still mad at me. And his tenacity is winning over rehabber Nancy Reynolds. I don't usually like turtles, but every time I come near him, he starts opening his mouth trying to eat. He didn't really love me, he just loved me for my food, but that's okay. It's like most males, they just love you for their food. Still looks gross, but it looks better than it did. The fix she and Nikki came up with is working, but he's not out of danger yet. The hooks were staying, the cracks weren't spreading, but most importantly, that membrane had scabbed over, there was no infection in there, so the only thing left was to cover that hole. Before Nancy can come up with a solution to seal the hole, she has to strengthen Rodney's shell with a treatment that involves UV light therapy. In order to protect the internal organs on this turtle, we're just going to cover it with a gauze patch so that way the UV light doesn't cause any damage. I'm sorry, I'm, I know you don't like that, but we have to cover it so you can get your sunlight. But we definitely don't want his inside suntan. This light bulb gives out the same UV rays as the, the sun would. So we use that just to give him 
a little bit every day to harden up that shell because without that, his shell is going to get soft. UV light aids in the production of vitamin D, which supports the absorption of calcium that helps the shell growth process. And I only do it on half of the cage. That way, if it does get too hot for him, he can move over to the other side. And it's not on him for very long, just long enough to get him a little sun. Probably keep it on for about an hour, turn it off, give him a break for a couple hours, cool down, turn it on again for another hour. I give him about two hours a day. I'm super excited about this. Jimmy the Screech Owl has been in the flight cage for two weeks, strengthening his wings. See, he likes this stuff. Now that we know that Jimmy is flying great, it is time for the next step where he can start learning to take live prey. There's Jimmy up on the perch. Oh, he is the cutest little screech owl. He really is. So Jimmy has been fed dead prey up until this point. But out in the wild, that's not what he's going to find. He needs to be able to hunt and kill live prey before we can release him. Sending him back out in the wild without that ability would put his life in danger. It's just really important that he eats. I get paranoid about them eating before they go out. The crickets are a really good test. The way Jimmy reacts to these crickets and millworms will tell us if he is ready to be released back into the wild. Let's head out. So that way we can give him some space. That way hopefully he'll come down and eat the millworms and crickets. You got to do it, Jimmy. Jimmy's journey has led him to this moment. If he fails to take the live prey, his release may be delayed or halted altogether. You know, it looks like he's looking at him. I'm just waiting and waiting, and the anticipation is killing me. It's like almost more than I can take. Come on, Jimmy. You know you want to eat. Jimmy the Screech Owl is facing the toughest test of his life. It's just really important that he eats. To prove he can survive on his own, he has to show licensed rehabbers Kristen and Grant Allen that he can catch live prey. You can do it. There he goes. <laughs> he grabs that cricket, and I'm like, yes! I'm so proud of that little guy. That means he's got enough agility to go down. He got the eyesight to see him, so it's good news for him. Good news good for news us. For us. <laughs> Jimmy has passed a critical milestone. Who chases him? A couple more weeks to grow and practice his hunting skills, and he'll be ready for release. Good job, Jimmy. It's been several weeks since Rodney the box turtle arrived at Nancy's house with the terrible wounds that nearly killed him. I didn't think Rodney was even going to make it through the first night, much less be where he is today. He responded really well to the UV treatment, but we still have that big hole to deal with. To begin the final step of his recovery, Rodney is off to see Dr. Mike O'Brien, a veterinarian at the Broadbent Wildlife Sanctuary with experience in shell reconstruction. Hi, Nancy. Hey, how are you? I brought you a turtle. Oh, right. Got hit by a car and uh, rolled a little bit. We had cracks here, here. Well, there's still cracks. Rolled all the way over, didn't it? Mm-hmm. It looks a lot better than he did when I got him. Doc O'Brien was surprised that this turtle had made it as far as it had. Now it's up to Doc and his assistant, Scott, to cover this hole in the shell. We could try an acrylic patch on this side. And that's as strong as this shell? As strong as this shell or strong. Sounds good to me. The turtle that has a fractured shell is open to infection and disease, uh, but also predators. Acrylic repair, it allows the turtle to get back into normal function much, much sooner. The procedure is effective, but it comes with a risk. As the chemical reaction that hardens the material takes place, it heats up quickly. It gets pretty warm when we put it on. We don't want to overheat the insides. Yeah. So. 
But Dr. O'Brien has a plan that will reduce the danger. We're gonna cool him down. The acrylic is hot, and we were using cold towels. And what that does is it extracts the heat into the towel. And now we're just gonna fill in our little holes. And... I'm gonna let it set just a little bit more so we don't. It was a little nerve wracking because if some of that did get in there, like just by accident, it's gonna like boil all its insides. Oh, I think he's beautiful compared to what he looked like when he came in. I truly believe that Rodney, with the repair that we made, he will be a very happy turtle. This is so cool. He will be able to go in the water. He'll be able to go in the grass, in the dirt. I suspect that he'll live a long, happy life. Awesome. Well, thank you so thank much you for, for saving helping his me. Life. <laughs> well, if we can help you again, let us know. Dr. O'Brien did a great job with Rodney. He sealed up that huge hole with the acrylic, and that will keep his inside safe until that shell can grow back. Not the prettiest little turtle, but it's okay. Rodney has overcome almost insurmountable odds to get to this point. And if the patch holds, Nancy can start looking for a suitable location for his release. The plan to recapture the injured chipmunk isn't going well for rehabber Bridgette Williams and her staff. He's not in here. <laughs> but not all the peanut butter is either. This little guy has slipped out one too many times. Today, I am making sure that my entire team dedicates a lot of time to finding this little chipmunk. Where's my net? I need my net. Tracy, can you grab my net? Oh, we're a chipmunk. Where would I be? Oh, I got him. No, no. Okay, this is the best teamwork ever, ever, ever. Look at this. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna put him down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you. This is one of the worst little escape artists, or should I say best little escape artist ever. I feel like I need to put him inside another cage just for security. Wow. This little chipmunk had absolutely no problem with evading my entire team. Now that I'm looking at this chipmunk, his leg seems to be perfectly fine. And this, to me, means that he is ready to go. All right, it's time to go. It's release day for Brigitte's crafty chipmunk. With his paw healed in a boundless amount of energy, he's more than ready to return home. Hey, gang. Nice to see you nice again. See you. Hi, guys. How are you? Brigitte returns the chipmunk back to the property of the family that found him. And I'm assuming this is the rock pile that you're talking about? Yes. I see lots of little crevices in there that they can go and hide. That's always the best spot for any animal that comes into rehabilitation. This chipmunk is going to know where its food source is. He's going to know where its shelter is. And he's back on his domain. Oh, I'm so happy. And I am also happy to be letting him go. <laughs> I feel differently towards every animal that I release. This was one that I am very excited to see go. He has took me for the money the past few days. Oh, you're going, you're going. And he's off. He's like, I am out of here, man. <laughs> you're welcome. OK, on to the next adventure. Rodney the box turtle has beaten the odds. It's time for him to head back outdoors, and Nikki has offered up a location on her father-in-law's property that is darn near a turtle paradise. Rodney still needs to take it easy, so we needed to find a spot that felt like home that still had some protection from predators and cars. And then Grandpa will show us where to go. The place that Nikki has got for Rodney to be released is beautiful, and it's perfect. It has water and plenty of room to explore. And it's fenced in, so he can stay here, take it easy until he heals up. Just right up here, just because he can, you know, be close to the water, but he can go wherever he wants to go. And of course, the whole yard's fenced in, so therefore, nothing can really get in here and get him. All right. 
Come on, Rodney. Oh. We didn't smooth it because it was going to be too much stress on him. Oh, my gosh. Big blob on me. I'm the happy camper. Oh, my gosh, that looks so good. I can't see your lung no more. I'm so happy. I am amazed at how good Rodney looks. When Nancy first called me over, I was skeptical that he'd even make it through the night. Yeah, he's come a long way from what he looked like whenever <laughs> I got him. That very first time I seen him, that was crazy. And you could see him breathing, and you could see through that membrane he had. Cracks everywhere. It was bad. He has had a long road to get to this place. From Nancy and I gluing his shell back together to his acrylic patch, and all this time he's been healing up. He has earned this. This place is perfect for him because he really can't get out. There's food here, there's water. He can't get to the road again. So he can just wander around here the rest of his life. It's a really good place, but I'm definitely gonna miss my mornings when I bring him that worm or no strawberries, and he is like lunging at me ready to eat, and he just looks so happy. I'm gonna miss this turtle. He's like, Mama, I'm gonna miss you too. I love you. I never thought I'd get attached to a turtle. You're getting all soft of, in your old age. Out of all <laughs> the things you get attached to, a stinking turtle. Not far north, the Allen family has gathered to say goodbye to a special little animal of their own. See a cricket. It is a beautiful night outside, the perfect night for Jimmy to be released. We know that screech owls really thrive around here. The reason that I chose to bring him here is because there are beautiful old trees here with holes in them, and that's the perfect place for screech owls to make their home. He's grown so much. He's looking around like, is this where I'm going to be forever? Exactly. When Jimmy first came to us, bless his little heart, he looked pretty pitiful. And there was a ton of steps that he had to go through before that. He started to fly on his own. He started taking his own live prey. Jimmy is a beautiful, beautiful bird. I truly wish that I could see him in two months when he looks just like his parents. I know. OK, let's try this. Look how handsome you are. Ready, Jimmy? When you get a bird in, like Jimmy, you see them grow just like you see your children grow. And you know that eventually that he's going to have to leave you. Get your wings out. One. Jimmy. But we also know that this is our job. This is what we were put on this earth to do. As Jimmy flies off, I think he's probably thinking, this is awesome. My whole world is here in front of me. He flew really well. He did. He did. Are you getting teary-eyed? No, I'm not getting teary-eyed. I'm perfectly <laughs> fine. I'm good. This is where he needs to be. This is where he needs he's to be. He's back where he came from. Exactly. He's like your little buddy. He was my little buddy, wasn't he? He says, I really like it over there. He'll make his way up. All right. Let's leave him to be to be wild now. Bye, Jimmy. <laughs> he really is so stinking cute.